I created this Excel to-do list in less than five minutes. This task tracker is perfect for keeping you motivated and productive. It's simple, streamlined, and highly flexible. I'll guide you through setting up the basic structure and introduce several enhancements, which I call power-ups. One of these power-ups includes Excel's new checkbox feature, which I have been dying to play around with. Hi, I'm Rebecca, and I teach Excel users how to create spreadsheets they can be proud of. Welcome to Excel Power Up. If you use Excel in any capacity, you're in the right place. Optimize all of your spreadsheets with my free masterclass, The Spreadsheet Tune-Up. In just five videos, you'll learn how to upgrade any spreadsheet. Start now and you'll have more efficient and user-friendly spreadsheets right away. Let's start out with this list of tasks. We're going to add a header to this column and call it task. And the next column, let's say, is due date. And the next next column I'm going to call completed and that's where we're going to be putting the checkbox. So the first thing that we do after we make our headers is to insert an Excel table. So we go up to the insert tab and then click table and then in this uh, pop-up box we can check my table has headers because we already added those. And now we can select a table style that we like from this table styles uh, menu. Great, so already it's looking, it's looking really good and we have a lot of extra features because this is a table. Also, we need to name it. So I'm gonna call this my tasks. All right, now the next thing that we need to do is to remove the grid lines just for the visuals. So I'm going to the view tab and then I'm going to uncheck grid lines and that just makes it look a lot cleaner and simpler. Now since this is fake data, I'm going to fill in these due dates with some fake numbers. And then the complete column is where we're going to actually be putting the checkboxes. I'm so excited to show you this. It couldn't be simpler. You select the column, then go to insert and find this new checkbox button. Maybe you've had it for a while or maybe you don't have it yet, but be watching your Excel if you have Microsoft 365 because this button is amazing. So it's a totally new data type that looks just like a checkbox and the value is false until it's checked and then the value becomes true, which is important to know for when we do any kind of summary formulas or any conditional formatting that is based on whether the task is completed. Speaking of conditional formatting, that's going to be our very first power up. This is the basic structure. It'll get the job done, but to make the checklist and this to-do list truly uh, amazing, we're gonna have to add some power ups. The first thing that I wanna do is set up conditional formatting so that this whole row will cr be crossed off when you check completed. So, to get that done, we're going to be selecting the whole table. And you notice that when you select something, the cell that you select from is still white, but everything else is shaded. Make sure that the top left cell in the table is the one that is not shaded. Then go to home and find this conditional formatting button. We're gonna skip all of these um, defaults and go down to new rule and then down to the bottom here, use a formula to determine which cells to format. And we're gonna move this out of the way so we can see the first row of the completed column where the first checkbox is, because that's like the avatar. It's the one uh, that we're going to be using in this formula. So that is cell D3. So we're gonna format values where this formula is true and we will type in equals, you can actually select D3, but then it automatically puts the dollar signs, which make this an absolute reference, but we don't wanna always reference this one. It, we want the conditional formatting to change based on the row. So I'm gonna take off the dollar sign before the row, and then equals true, oops, true. So that when this formula is true, which means when the checkbox is checked off, we want the format to be applied. And what format is that? I want a strike through. It's right here. So we'll click OK and then click OK. And now you can see that anytime this is checked off, the whole row is 
crossed off, which is a very nice little interactive feature. The next power up that we're going to add is a summary of the tasks at the very top. So I'm adding some rows and then I'll have a, I'm having something called progress and then overdue. And these are just gonna be summarizing the data that's in this table. So the, for the progress, I just wanna know how many are completed as a percentage of the total number of tasks. So I'm gonna build out this formula starting with how many of these tasks are completed. So we're going to use the function count if, which counts the number that meet a specific criteria. So I'm gonna select this whole column and you can see that because we named this table my tasks, that's what's showing up here. This is called a structured reference. So this is the table name, this is the column name, it makes your formulas a lot cleaner. And then comma, the criteria is true because we wanna know how many have been checked off. So now you can see there are four that have been checked off. Great. Now, if we want this as a percentage, we just need to divide by the total number of tasks. So I'm gonna be using the rows function, which returns the number of rows. And I'll just select this first column. Okay, so now it's 0.2. But since we want this as a percent, I'm gonna come up here to this number, um, group in the home tab and click on the percent sign so that it becomes a percent 20 percent so 20 percent are completed and you can see as i check off more it's becoming a greater number that are completed to make this visual let's add a data bar that's a type of conditional formatting so i'm going to just go to conditional formatting data bars and then choose one choose a color that one's not too bad, but you can see it didn't actually work. It filled in the entire um, cell. So let's go and drill down into here, into the manage rules, double click on that. And then here you can see the problem is that the minimum and the maximum are automatic because this was designed to automatically detect uh, what's the minimum and the maximum. So instead I'm just going to select a number and say the minimum would be zero and the maximum would be one. So click OK, apply OK. And now you can see that this is a data bar. I'm actually gonna throw a border around this, thick outside border, um, just to look a little more bounded. And you can see when I'm unchecking these, it's getting lower. And then as I check more and more, it is filling that in, which can be really motivating to see those changes as you check things off. The next thing we want to do is look at the due date. So the first thing is I want to highlight the due date or I guess change the cell color if it is overdue. So let's select this whole due date column and then go to conditional formatting and go to new rule. So we're going to use a formula to determine which cells to format. And we're going to do a comparison. So we're gonna type the equal sign and then select the current cell. Again, we'll remove the dollar sign from the row so that it will change what's being detected um, as we move down the row. And then we'll say if that date is less than today, and open and close parentheses, today is a function that um, automatically has today's date. So now I'm gonna be changing the format and I want the font color to turn red. Okay, so now you can see any days that are before today, surprise, today is November 20th, 2024, the day that I'm filming. Um, so all of these are overdue. Wow, that's a lot that's overdue. I should have chosen a different day. Actually, let's do that. So, da, da, da. there we go, okay. So now we have more manageable, only five are overdue. So that's one thing we can do. The next thing that we need to do is calculate how many are overdue, but this one's gonna be a little more tricky because I wanna know how many are overdue and not completed. So to do that, we're not gonna be using count if, we're gonna be using its sister function, count if s, which allows you to provide multiple criteria to count. So the first criteria is gonna be similar to the due date. 
it's going to be whether this due date column, I'm just selecting it, is less than today. Now this is a, a kind of weird thing. I had to look it up. Here's the form, the format for this formula. We're going to be putting in double quotes the less than sign and then using the ampersand. Then we can type in today, open and close parentheses. So it will check whether the due date column is less than today. Then we'll type in another criteria because we also want to know if the, if the task was actually not completed. So we'll type in false. So we only want to count if the due date is less than today, that's the first criteria, and it was not completed. So you can see that's three because there are three that are not, uh, that were before today, due before today, and have not been completed. So if we check one of those off, there are two that are overdue now. Because even if it's overdue, if you complete it, you should still get the credit. Note, the checkbox feature is only available in Microsoft 365 and Excel for the web. Let me know in the comments which of these power-ups you'll use in your to-do list. I've included links in the description box for some Microsoft support articles for some of the features and functions that we've discussed today. There are also links to my free Excel masterclass, my online course, and all of my social media accounts if you want to connect.